Okay, so continuing on from the last few weeks, uh, the first question that was asked was, what is the most highly trained animal? I think we kind of agree. I agree with you guys, the consensus anyway, that it's the human being. And then the question then was asked last week, what causes that ability or uh, what is the, the root cause for that capacity, I guess, let's say? to be highly trainable or what causes that. So I've got some interesting answers. Um, and I think they're all pointing at the same, or most of them are pointing at the same thing, actually. Um, so I'll read a few here. Uh, education, animals don't need institutions to teach them how to live. They know that instinctively. Okay, so we're talking about instinct, how that meets education. Uh, someone said fear, someone said language, someone said fear of the unknown. Uh, another person said, we're a slave to our base impulses, arguably more so because in the civilization we live in, they're, uh, they are so easily accessible. <clears throat> so I'm already seeing a theme here. Um, base impulses, fear, uh, listed twice here. Um, instinctively is mentioned here. Instincts. Let's see what else. A couple more comments. Um, this is a very long one. I won't, I won't read the whole thing, but uh, people operate in magic circles. Magic circle is an abstract space that some people share. Uh, I'm trying to get to their... Let's see. People don't want to be kicked out of magic circles. So we're talking about instinct again. We're talking about fear, survivability, okay? So that's uh, that. And then one more comment. Uh, human language, specifically that it is abstract and imaginative not just referential. Okay, so it looks like overall the consensus answer is something, if I were to just kind of put it together, kind of in aggregate, it's something to do with instincts, fear, and I am playing this idea that, that actually um, our most uh, compelling instinct, the strongest instinct in the human being, in any animal, you could say the human animal if you want, when you're talking about the instinctual side of, of a human being, the survival instinct, right? That's the strongest instinct. And that includes all sorts of things up and down the chain of existence. But now the question is, if the most trainable animal is a human being and that, that creature, um, for, you know, it, it makes, it makes it so um, that it's trainable because or through um, this instinct, this survival instinct. Um, let's say, let's just say um, it's reasonable to presume that the intellect is informed from the instincts, okay? So let's just say that developed, uh, evolved, if you like, naturally, so that we have this intellect, we have this capacity for language, I see language as the answer, and I think language is a little bit further on in uh, the development cycle, but I, but I completely understand that that is kind of like, let's say language or imagination or intellect is sort of uh, what we see in the development cycle as kind of what we see so far, okay? So we have instinct and we share that with all the animals, our survival instinct, and there's there's a need to survive, there's a you know, all of the uh, necessities of mother and invention, right? That's a way to express intellectually in the human space that um, where there is a will, there's a way to survive no matter, you know, what that, uh, what sort of contrivance or uh, natural evolution or anything that has to occur, survival is the number one thing. And so everything that will develop will come out of that in some form or fashion. So let's just say that... Um, the intellect, language, the neocortex development, whatever you want to, whatever you, however you want to think about it biologically or, or otherwise, um, that is informed by our instincts in a sense, right? And so we can go about our lives as sort of uh, rationalizing our, our needs or rationalizing our instincts or, you know, we can go about in every sort of intellectual way, uh, 
you know, telling ourselves all sorts of things, but a lot of that is servicing just the survival instinct. Sometimes we act counter to that instinct just because our intellect is informed by the our strongest instinct, which is survival. It doesn't mean that we're intellectually making the right choices every time, right? Uh, a creature acts in its own uh, best interest for its own survival, but then even then that's, that's an irrational thing and it may or may not be doing something uh, that is going to benefit it because it doesn't really have the in the entire picture and the intellect's actually the same uh, it's 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 almost like a, a, a version of that in the sense that the intellect is a very narrow focused sort of thing and it's not uh anything on the level of like say the intuition which was uh which is more instinctual more primal um and that's more kind of something that was essential a long time ago in order to um, survive, but that is uh, quite obviously for for a lot of people um, not really used anymore and, and, and kind of going uh, going away. So we have this intellect, we have this narrow focused, and but we know that that is somehow uh, informed by our instincts. So my question then. If we've got this uh, picture of this creature, this human animal, it's got this instincts and it's it's foundationally formed by instinct, right? And then on top of that, you've got, you know, the limbics, you know, let's say you've got the R complex. Let's just use the triune brain model. I know, I know it's not, it's not, uh, you know, scientific or whatever, but let's just use that for analogy's sake. So you've got this very primal, primordial, just instinctual, you know, uh, part of the brain, the lizard brain. And then you have the, the, the limbic system and you have, uh, you know, you have emotion, intuition, these things come in. Um, and mammals, obviously that's a strategy for mammals since they don't have as many young and they need to care for those young and help them develop. Uh, so that's a survival strategy. And then of course, from the limbic brain, uh, the next one up, of course, is the um, neocortex, the um, the monkey expansion pack. And that's where we have intellect, okay? That's where we have, like, rationality, language, imagination, all these things. So my question then is, in our, if you think about our kind of day-to-day -day lives, um, and I would, I would kind of make the argument, I think, and still this is, I'm still developing this idea, and I would kind of make the argument that we spend the overwhelming majority of our time, whether we rationally understand it or not, whether we're conscious of it or not, we spend the overall, the, the overwhelming majority of our day uh, engaging in activities that are informed by the survival instincts in some way, even if they seem counterintuitive, even if they seem damaging, um, even if they seem like uh, they're hurtful or they're not, uh, or they're completely uh, sort of not in line with what, you know, an animal would actually do to survive. Um, you have to understand that uh, we're not living in an environment as human beings anymore where our uh, more, you know, true to life instincts will be serviced or will be um, at all recognizable in the sense that, you know, you could see that in a wild animal or, or, or just an animal that doesn't have rationality. So my question is, because I think there's a lot of confusion about, what, because I feel like our rationality is informed by our survival instinct. So the question is, if, if, if that premise uh, seems at least true. Maybe we can investigate that. But if that seems true, um, where does the intellect uh, begin and the instincts end? Right. If the instinctual survival, if the survival instinct is informing our rationality, even our imagination, language in some way, at what point does it do that? Where where does that like? Where's the gateway? Where is there somewhere that we can point to, or, or is there just such a uh, 
is it so integral? It seems like it is. It has to be integral. Um, because the thing is, if we, if we try to do this as an intellectual exercise and we try to tease apart the whole, right? We try to tease that apart and we point at one little thing or this little thing. Well, we're not accounting for um, the entire spectrum. And so I'm thinking in terms of what's the spectrum from basic survival, even like, you know, subconscious involuntary uh, instincts, you know, all the way up the chain to survival instincts, uh, you know, limbic system, neocortex. How does that, um, where does, where does one end and the other begin, I guess, is my question. So have a think on that and let me know what you think in the comments.